From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. A nickel bag gets sold in the park. I want in. Yes, yes, yes. We are back again with another verified DB teach tape. It's your gracious host, Mr. VDB. And I'm back once again to kick game and kick flavor for all my young DBs out there. Now, I hope you guys have been on the field. You're working on your craft. I'm telling you guys, this is the time during quarantine to really separate yourself from the competition. You know these soft receivers that's sitting in the house, these pretty boy footwork receivers, they're chilling right now. This is the time where we take our game to the next level. But like I said before, the game, trust me guys, when you get to the college level, when you hopefully you make it to the NFL, the game becomes 10% physical, 90% mental. You got to know what you're doing every time you step out on the field. You got to be a machine out there. And with that being said, you know, we're back with another teach tape. Today, we're breaking down our boy Jeff Gladney, who was another top corner in this, uh, in this year's draft. I believe he got drafted to the Minnesota Vikings. I love their draft class. They have Jeff Gladney and Cameron Dantzler, another corner that I'll be doing a breakdown on in the future. Two top-notch corners, so I look for big things out of the Minnesota Vikings secondary this season. But with that being said, let, let's get straight into the teach tape, guys. You know, I, I owe you guys some teach tapes, so let's get straight back into it. Now, my man Jeff Gladney, he's matched up here in press coverage. So we're watching his press footwork. Now, one thing I always tell you guys is to understand positions of power. First of all, on this play, it looks like Jeff Gladney is lined up outside leverage. And that's smart. He's lined up outside leverage because you have an outside receiver who's lined up inside the numbers. That's the first thing you need to keep in mind. You have an outside receiver lined up inside the numbers. Therefore, most times we're looking for an outside route in this situation. If he was trying to run an inside route, most times he's going to try to give himself room to run that inside route by lining up outside the numbers. So that he's inside the numbers, this is a dead giveaway. And one of the more popular deep routes they like to run is what I like to call a pylon route which is they really just try to run at an angle to the sideline. It's very hard to guard because it's a lot of room to cover at DB, especially when you're dealing with some of these more new age, quick and shifty receivers. You see what I'm saying? So he's lined up outside leverage. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Now, what I love early, he does a great job of staying square off the line, shading to the inside. However, I tell you guys about this all the time. He begins to open up his hips. You want to fight to stay square as long as possible, guys. I always tell you guys, at least give me one shuffle step. One shuffle step into your press. But he begins to open it up. And see, the receiver has to do all this zigzagging because right now, Jeff Gladney is where he wants to be. He wants to be on the outside because he's trying to run an outside route, like I told you before. Him lining up inside the numbers as the outside receiver is a dead giveaway for that. But Jeff Gladney begins to open it up right there and he makes his move as soon as he gets that open up you see what i'm saying guys let me run it back one more time so you can see it from the top great job of staying square early but as soon as he opens up the receiver attacks it and gets outside gets jeff gladney on his heels now this is a key position because like i said guys when you're at corner you're not going to play it perfect every time you're going to get beat sometimes you're going to mess a mistake up in your route He's going to step on your toes. The guy's going to get a step on you. But how you finish is very key. If you can look right here, he's not, he's, even though he stepped on his toes and he gave up his outside leverage, he's not in bad position. The next step I tell you all the time, guys, is to squeeze this guy. Run to the pressure point. So Jeff Gladden does a great job. As you see, he's really not in a bad position right here. He's kind of still on his side. The receiver just has a lot of room, but he finishes. He finishes through his hands. And although you can't see it fully, he ends up dropping the ball right here. So a great job by Jeff Gladney. Let me run it back one more time for the guys. Stay square at the line as long as possible, guys. Keep staying square. Fight to stay square, but don't panic if something like this happens. If the guy steps on your toes, run to his hip. Run to his hip and finish through his hands. Great ball placement right there, finishing through his hands and raking that ball out. Great job by Jeff Gladney on that play. All right, so here on this play, we got our man Jeff Gladney again lined up with number eight from SMU. I got to find out this receiver's name. He's a, he looks like a pretty good route runner. 
uh, you know, in this game. Yay, yeah, Jeff Gladney, one of the top corners in this year's draft, some pretty good work. But on this play, again, I'm noticing positions of power, guys. If the receiver is lined up inside the numbers nine times out of ten, I'm going to line up outside shade because I understand that he's trying to get room to run these fade routes. You see what I'm saying? If he was trying to run an inside route, he's going to line up wide to give himself more room to work inside. You see what I'm saying, guys? So to me on this play, now some people are taught different. Sometimes the coach tells you to play inside regardless. I don't know, but for me, I'm going to line up outside leverage on this play. You see what I'm saying? Number two, if I'm in press man position, you want to be where your fellow slot corner is. Jeff Gladney is, to me, too far back. He's in no man's land. He's almost playing like a catch at this technique. You're too far back, and that becomes a problem, especially when we work in the inch back technique. If you're inching back and you're already two yards back, you might as well just work yourself. You might as well just play off man. You see what I'm saying, guys? You might as well just play off man. So from the snap, great job of staying square on this play. But again, he were, he was so far back to begin with, he never could get hands on this guy. And with these short, shifty receivers, you have to get hands on these guys, family. You have to get hands on these guys. So again, the same route as earlier runs the fake slant, a sluggo as we call it. And now he you gave him all this room. This is why attention to detail is very important. Attention to detail, he makes a great catch. And the rest is history. Let's run it back one more time from the top. Again, pay attention to details. Great job of staying square, but positioning killed Jeff Gladney on this play. He was never able to get hands on him, although he stayed square because he started off two yards back. And the receivers look for cushion. They love cushion. They eat up cushion, guys. You got to remember that. You got to be in position at all times to put hands on these receivers. You have to at least give them the threat that you can put hands on them. Because if you allow them to run these routes on air, they're damn near going to be impossible to stop, even for a very athletic corner like Jeff Gladney. So here we have my man Jeff Gladney on this play. He's working against Johnson, one of these bigger receivers, bigger possession receivers. And a guy asked me the other day, he said, as a smaller corner, how do you defeat these big possession receivers? And the key to that family is being a pest. As a smaller corner going against these bigger receivers, you want to be a pest because bigger receivers nine times out of ten can't run good crisp routes. They solely depend on them bodying you, basically posting you up and catching jump balls on you all day. You being too small to simply defend them. You have to be a pest. You have to throw off their timing. Trip them if you have to. You see what I'm saying? Tangle feet with them if you have to. You have to get in that grill. You have to be like a gnat at the barbecue when you're playing against these bigger receivers to throw off their time and then just to get in their head in general. Because one thing about bigger receivers, they're usually slower and they're not good route runners, like I said before. So you have to get inside their body. So on this play, Jeff Gladney does something that I think a lot of more corners should use. I used to do this a lot when I was playing in the safety on the slots. This is a way where you can get guys to get out their release early and to show you their route early. So what Jeff Gladney does on this play right here, he fakes his jam. He fakes his jam. Let me run it back one more time. He fakes his jam. And I keep, I keep telling you guys, receivers are taught never to let the DB get his hands on you. So once they see your hands, the, the threat of you touching them, they show you their release. So that's a way you can get these little slot receivers who like to walk off the line. They're real patient. A lot of them like to wait for you to make a mistake. You can go ahead and get them into their release by faking their jam. But again, it's a chess move. After I fake the jam, I already know I'm backpedaling or I'm shuffling to them. You see what I'm saying? It's a chess move. So I'm showing you this, but I already know what I'm going to do next. You see what I'm saying? I already know what I'm going to do next. So he fakes the jam. He shows on the release. And Jeff Gladney immediately, now that he sees this is a fade route, he gets directly into his body. Great job, Shuffles. Gets directly into his body, and now I'm locating because he's trying to run a fade route. So it's either coming two ways for Jeff Gladney right here as he's looking at the quarterback. He's either throwing this back shoulder or he's throwing it over the top. Back shoulder or over the top. So right now, what I tell you guys all the time, he's looking outside, then back in. She checks that, eliminates the back shoulder. Now let me work my way back in. And by this time, he got so into the receiver's chest, that is incomplete, guys. That's picture perfect. Great job by Jeff Gladney on that play. You can't play it any better than that, guys. 
Great job by him on that play. Now we have another red zone situation. I caught this film late, unfortunately, so you really can't see at the line, but this is good enough to work with. I believe this receiver's name is Menz. He's another good receiver from Baylor. Another kind of rangy, not really a possession receiver guy, but one of these, you know, new age freaks that are long, physical, and can really run. So again, on this play, great job by Jeff Gladney staying square at the line and getting into his chest. Two hands on the receiver, get into his chest, staying square and wrestling with him now once he stays square and wrestling with him he looks outside in first guys and really he doesn't even look outside because he did a great job of staying square so he wasn't even turned he wasn't even turned and this is the beauty of staying square especially on the goal line he wasn't even turned that way he can locate the ball he's still square at this point locate the ball fight pressure with pressure receivers love to push off you rarely going to get an offensive pass interference, guys, especially down in the goal line. They love to push off, though. A way you counter that is to push back. You push back. So by the time he pushes off, he doesn't go anywhere. So you see what I'm saying? So when you push back, your momentum is still heading this way. Great job of fighting pressure with pressure and leaning back in to making a play. Great job by Jeff Gladney on that play. And like I say, that's today's teach tape. Jeff Gladney, a terrific corner, you know, and I wanted to show you the guys these things because although he's a great corner, like I say, he makes mistakes sometimes, but I think he's going to be a great corner at the next level because overall, he's very technically sound, very technically sound. Only time he really gets beat is he misaligned or something like that, or just to me, not paying attention to details, but that's things you can clean up. So with that being said, guys, a couple things I want you to work on. I want y'all guys to work on maintaining your leverage maintaining your position of power you see what i'm saying if you're lined up on a play your receivers lined up inside the numbers and you're playing outside leverage work on maintaining that leverage don't fall for the eye candy receivers are very good especially these short quick uh shifty receivers they're very good at tricking you out your position they'll they'll think you they'll make you think they're running a slant just to get you out their position it'll be a sluggo you see what I'm saying? They're very calculated with moves. So work on maintaining your leverage, guys, whether it be inside or outside. The second thing I want you to work on, let's let's start throwing into our game. Let's throw in a little fake jam into our games. Like I showed you Jeff Gladney did versus the receiver with Texas. He you fake your jam at the line, fake your hands at the lines. And most times, especially with these short, shifty receivers, guys, that's gonna scare them so much they're gonna show you their release. They won't do all that dancing at the line. So if you always got a receiver up there dancing, he takes forever to run your routes, especially I already know it's frustrating playing one-on-ones because one-on-ones is no pass rush and nothing like that. If you're in practice, if you want the receiver to hurry up and get out his break or hurry up and get into his release, show him your hands. So work on that. But when you show him your hands, guys, be prepared for what comes with that. Meaning it's a chess game. You see what I'm saying? Boxers would throw a jab knowing they're going to duck behind that jab because they already know it's a response to that jab. So when you show your hands, be ready to back up real quick and be ready to run. You see what I'm saying? Because the release is coming. Don't get caught flat footed in your fake jam. You see what I'm saying, family? Don't be caught flat footed in your fake jam. And last but not least, I want you to work on fighting pressure with pressure. A lot of receivers like to push off. Refs never call us. The refs are always hating on DBs. We always the bad guys on the field. That's okay. We're not going to cry. We're not going to complain. But we're going to fight pressure with pressure, especially with these big receivers. They're going to try to push off. When they push at you, you push back at them. You see what I'm saying? You body them. You lean into them, guys. That way, when they're trying to get that separation, it does not happen because you're already leaning the way they're trying to push you against you. You see what I'm saying? With that being said, guys, let's try to get this video to, let's say, 125 likes. Let's get this video to 125 likes, guys. I know we can do it. Share it. Spread it. Instagram page coming soon. It might be out by the time this video is out. I'll put it in the bio if it is, guys. But until next time, Mr. VDB, get out of there on the field, work on your craft, and stay solid. I'm out.